You're listening to All Hit Radio, and it's 53 degrees at 13 minutes past the hour. And right now in our All Request line, I've got Mike Ledgerwood on the phone. Hey, babe, what would you like to hear? We've been observing your Hey, babe, I'm sorry. I can't hear you too well. You're going to have to speak a little closer into the phone. Okay, babe, what would you like to hear again? We are observing your Earth. Hey, Mike, I'm sorry, babe, but that's not on our playlist. And by the way, you sound great over the phone. Anyway, if you give us your request, we'll be glad to play it for you, babe. So let's hear it. We are observing your Earth. Uh, listen, Mike, I'm sorry, babe, but we can't... And we'd like to make... I'm sorry, Mike, we... Uh... With you. He took the bomb... <laughs> However, if an event occurs and you do not have any idea on what to do, listen to me closely. Before a visitor arrives, the secretary tries to foresee what the employer may need during the visit. In handling visitors, a secretary must be cautious to everyone. Each visitor should be greeted promptly no matter what the secretary is working on at the time. Good morning, miss. What can I help you? Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? How are you doing, madam? How can I be of assistance to you? When receiving visitors, the first important step is greeting them and finding out who they are and what they want. The visitors usually mention their names and the name of the company that they work for. Good morning, sir. May I help you? Hi. Could I see Mr. Nijiro Murakami? May I have your name, please? Dylan Villanueva from Hot Eco Tour Design. Sometimes people may come to the office by mistake. The secretary tries to be as helpful as possible in directing them to the right place. Hi, uh, is this the top office company? Good afternoon, sir. I'm afraid you got the wrong company. Bottom office supply company is where you are right now. When a visitor wants to see the boss, the secretary must decide whether they should be given priority, unless, of course, they have an appointment. Sir Noon, I'd like to see Miss Vice Ganda. Your name, please? Jason Jason Kakachan. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Kakaitin. I'll see if you can see you right now. Sometimes it's necessary to offer them a seat or a cup of coffee. Small talk or conversations about the flight, the weather, or other common topics that put the visitors at ease. Please have a seat, Mr. Dehones. Miss Lily Chuchu will be along shortly. Thank you. Would you like something to drink? Coffee or black tea? Yes, I'd like some coffee, please. Cream and sugar? Yes, sugar, please. Thank you. Where's my coffee? Where the hell is my coffee? My coffee! Well, well, well. We don't do that here. Because here, my dear colleagues, we are expected to act professional. How? Don't worry. I'll tell you tips on handling expected visitors and how to make them feel comfortable. As we are expecting for their presence, they are as well anticipating for us to give our very best. So buckle up and don't let them down. Whoa! Apart from welcoming visitors, it's important to make sure that the reception area is as warm and inviting as possible. First, the reception area should be on brand, well lit and clean, with a comfortable place where they can sit while waiting. Your manager may need materials from the files, correspondence, and records to refer to during meetings. Anticipate what materials will be needed and write them the day before so you will have the information ready when it is needed. Your job is to make all visitors, whether they have appointments or not, feel at ease. First, you show the visitor where to leave his hat, coat, briefcase, and any other articles that he has with him. 
when the caller has to wait, ask him to have a seat. If he has to wait any length of time, offer him a newspaper or a magazine. The caller deserves a special attention. Ask him, is there anything I can do for you while you are waiting? Aside from these basic tips, we also must learn how to observe proper ethics. Encounters with visitors can be challenging if you do not speak their language and they do not speak yours. When this occurs, the first thing you try to do is to figure out what language they are using. If you are aware of the language that they are using and you know someone in the office who speaks it, contact the person who can talk to them and explain the problem and kindly ask them to help you in aiding the visit. Always be prepared to help visitors. Notice if they have special needs and make them as comfortable as possible. Remember not to wait to be asked, whether it is holding open doors for someone who uses a wheelchair or simply someone who has difficulty walking. Your helpfulness will show your company is caring and wants to help in any way it can. You must be at all times be careful at what information you will give to a visitor waiting for your manager. Here are some areas to avoid while chatting with a waiting visitor. Avoid sharing confidential information about products, office gossip, company successes, or problems. When two or more visitors appear, use the first come first serve rule. A visitor may be offended by questions that appear to be prying into his or her personal life. Never assume based on the color of a person's skin he or she is from a certain country. If your manager travels to meet international clients, it's very possible those clients will also visit your office. The work of handling international clients requires a completely new set of knowledge and skills. Take that! The comfort of your guests should be your top priority. This means researching their culture and company and incorporating as much of their customs into the visit as possible. Examples might be, Hello? How are you? Please? Thank you? goodbye and it was a pleasure to meet you. Even a few of these words and phrases will demonstrate to the client that you are interested in the client and the country. To see to your international clients have handed the nearest consulate's location, phone number, and ambassador's name for reference should you need them. Never assume based on the color of a person's skin, he or she is from a certain country. May I have a minute? Sir, I'm sorry but your name isn't listed on today's scheduled visitors list. But it's really urgent! Yes, sir, but you also have some important things that we are dealing with here. I would be glad if you could set a different appointment date and time. Hold on, hold on, hold on on that, hold on, hold on. Don't want your precious time being disregarded? Come on, set your appointments now. First, it's important to note that you need to be considerate in your scheduling. When making an appointment, you should introduce yourself and explain the reason for wanting an appointment. Ask how long the appointment will take so your meeting won't unnecessarily go on and on throughout the day. Emailing is another method for scheduling appointments. However, most people prefer to use their phones. The process of sending an appointment email is slower but uses less energy. But what if a COVID arises? Ensure that you have accurate records of planned activities. Check on with your employer as often as you believe is necessary. Your boss can have added events to his calendar that will not appear on yours. What does that mean, Nate? Electronic calendars are a type of calendar that can be accessed via smartphones and devices. You can easily set up meetings, mark important dates, and at the same time remind you when something is up in the calendar. Web-based calendars have the same function as electronic calendars. The only difference is how you can access it. 
Web base is self-explanatory. It is accessed on the web. Paper desk calendars are like standard calendars. The difference is that paper desk calendars are smaller and desk sized compared to normal ones. This type of calendar is executive appointment books and calendars. The book contains log data and important data during that time. Meanwhile, the calendar is mostly used in the offices of the Senate. What? You can't just cancel appointments abruptly. The individual you have an appointment with should be called immediately if you have less than a day notice. And you need to explain briefly why you cannot make it and offer them a sincere apology. We are sorry. We do not want to do with humans anymore.